I should be live. I have no idea if I'm live. Can I pop out live chat? Just pop out. Live chat can be right here. Welcome, welcome. I know I normally stream on Sundays, and, but yesterday, today being Monday, yesterday was a um, busy day, and it just didn't happen, and that's my fault, and I have to do it today and get it over with, so that way it's up, and I actually do what I'm supposed to do. <laughs> Gotta do my job. Is this my job? I don't know. Hello, Justin. Hello, Kyle. All right. Um, today's live stream brought to you by me. We're going to be uh, brewing some cities, some towns. How's my mic sound? I'm, uh, looks like I'm a little low. That's interesting. One. How's that? I think that's a little bit louder. Yeah? Monday evening. I would imagine not a lot of people are hopping on a live stream on Monday evening, but that's okay. Um, got a new shirt out for the merch. That's exciting. Um, I'm doing well. That new shirt is popping. It's really cool. Uh, it's the Four Horsemen of the Apocalypse tee. We have all four of the, all five of the Four Horsemen, and uh, it's the official art by Ali Edwards. And we put it on a shirt, and it's cool. Took a while to organize it and orient it right, but yeah, it was fine. Love it. Uh, I'm happy to help you, Kyle. Um, yeah, so we're going to talk about city building and world building. And I don't know if we have a lot of time. I don't know if we have enough time to go over everything I think we could go over. So I'm going to kind of try to structure this in an interesting way. And I would love your help with making it. Uh, the shirts located should be, I think it's only on mobile that YouTube does this. Um, if you're on YouTube, it's right uh, below the video. Maybe that's only on mobile, but the, the link to the store should be in the description. And then it's also linked in our Discord, which is also linked down in the description. <laughs> All right, let me get the Google Docs. That's the word. I want to get Google Docs open so we can types. I think we all want to get some types on. There we go. Googles. Stand by. Let me know if the music is a little loud or not. Just meant to be a, it's a nice background. There we go. Just got into D and D. Um, that's that's great. I'm excited. I'm excited to see what characters you make and what characters die. <laughs> um, all right. Let's see. Scenes. Let's see if I break it. I didn't break it. Cool. So we're on our Google Doc here. And... Just a bit. Okay, so... 
what we're gonna do is build a town. I've personally never built a town. I, I have some golden rules in my head based off what other people have said on the internet and what, um, you know, the, the DMG says. But we're kind of just gonna homebrew something. We're just gonna make something. Um, ideally, it makes sense. And ideally, it can be a template for us to swap out its parts and make our own towns so that next time that you want to make a town or a city, whatever we get to today, um, this video and this can can generally help you and help me. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna start with a village and then ideally we can hop to a couple towns and a couple cities. I think that's very ambitious, but we're gonna try it. So, we got a village first. Oh, come on, I gotta get my formatting. Come on. Here, let me pop this over here for a second. I wanna bring something up for you so we can all reference together. Not my primer. Combat classes? No. Um, guilds. I'm sorry. I'm my brain's drawing a blank. It's probably in my binder for sure, though. This is how prepared I am. This is how amazing I am. Like, look how prepared this I am. I know everything by heart. Yeah, there it is. Don't know what the file is though, but here it is. Common society, common justice and crime. Here we go. Beautiful, my city generator. And then uh, sperm, social, political, economic, educational, religion, military, and magic. Great. Everything we need is right in front of me. So prepared. So prepared. You have no idea how prepared I am. Scatter the papers. Uh, how, does, how does my audio sound, though? Genuine question. Uh, not to derail too much, but this is a microphone I'm testing for the table. And I just want to know how much it's, how well it sounds. It's, kind, it's pretty much six inches away. It's a nice little pencil mic from Samson. All right, so. We're gonna start with a village. So I'm gonna make some parameters for us to follow. Um, usually in the, in the uh, DMG, it has a variant range, a variant range on of how many people live in a village, how many people live in a town. We're gonna do a hard number, so it reduces how much thinking power, and we can you can change it as much as you want, but we're gonna leave that template. So we're gonna say 100 people. P people. And let's see, a village, if it's 100 people, 10 to 15 houses. Couple barns. A stable. A shrine. I don't think, and we can and we can talk about this and uh, break this down a little bit too. Uh, no military. So no police. And let's say a 1d6 chance of traveling military so sperm uh, sperm it's uh, the original term is spelled sperm but it is meant to be social 
political, economic, education. The original one did not have education. Uh, and then, am I spelling things right? Yep, nope, nope, there we go. Religion, military, and then the added M being magic. So I added education and magic. The original sperm came from Dale King's Mill, which I love this concept. Every, func every part of functioning society usually has sperm in it. Hey, Orange, what's, how, what's going on? Uh, I mean, audio technica sounds great. Great. Awesome. I'm happy to hear that my mic sounds great. Um, when is the Corridor d, d series coming out? I will let you know when I'm allowed to let you know. <laughs> uh, so, the concept being... Uh, these are the social, political, economic, education, religion, military, magic. These seven parameters are what are our main guiding tools through uh, making these towns and making these cities. Uh, another rule of thumb is a, in general, how a society grows is a society cannot rule farther on average more than two weeks travel uh, so what that means is if the capital is in the center the farthest city and town and village can only be up to uh, roughly two weeks obviously you can fudge that as much as you want but that's an interesting factoid about history um, so, what I have here is where. I, technically, villages can, ha can be placed anywhere on the map, right? They can happen in the forest, they can happen by a river, they can happen by a mountain. Usually, depending on the resources that village has access to, it will boom and grow into a town. And that's all dependent on your story. If a village doesn't grow, the, the claim, the, their resources are much harder to get. So we'll say this is a village. Uh, I'll say about one week of walking distance from a town. That's how you spell town, didn't you know that? Uh, the purpose of a village. I believe, and we can debate about this, is working, living, and paying taxes. That's its purpose. Um, it's work, you know, we, we can, that's what we're gonna talk about. What does it do? What does a specific village do? And I wanna figure out important NPCs. I have a few, but I wanna hear yours first. So we're gonna start with, the, oh, I, I skipped one okay so we said there's no military because it's not cost effective for the capital to put police and guard and military in a village just have a patrol a patrol that goes through the kingdom that will eventually come around you know um and if you're doing going to add a mechanic to that to see if the players bump into that military just 1d6 you know uh on a six Let's, let's give that five to six is a yes. There you go. So what are out of the seven aspects of society happening in this village? Definitely social. There's going to be something social about this and uh, political. Uh, maybe economic. Yes, there has to be something economic happening, whether it's a flourishing thing or not. These people have to pay taxes for living in the region. Uh, religion, absolutely. People need faith um, in a world with an actual pantheon that on a meta level we know exists. Um, 
Is there education in a village? I don't think there's a real education, but we'll, we'll tip our toes in there. There's no military. Is there magic? Hmm. Maybe. Let's debate about this. Okay. So where... Uh, Matt Colville came out with a video recently talking about engaging with your players, right? And the concept being, if you have a cool piece of lore, but your players aren't engaged with it, make that lore important to the quest, and thus the players will care. Pretty simple, straightforward, and makes sense. So, um, the idea is if I want these aspects of the lore to communicate to the players when they walk into this village, I have to make sure these are materialized, you know? So this kind of goes into the important NPCs. I think there should be an NPC that represents each one of these aspects that exist in this village. Therefore, if the people if the players want to learn something about the social society, there's a place and a person that I have prepared that they could go talk to. Or at least not fully prepared, but an idea of. Same thing with the politics, the economics, you know, there's the head of the the hunting troop, you know? They can go talk to him or her or them about the specific thing that they need to talk about, especially if that's their economics. Okay. That is the starting point I see as making a village. From there on, it's completely subjective and we're going to kind of brain think, group think our way through this. So let me bring something up. So villages can go anywhere. Is there any other notes I have on any of my hundreds of note cards? My biggest note for villages is can happen anywhere. <laughs> uh, let's build towns. I don't have experience building towns. I have experience modifying towns with these parameters. So I want to build something from scratch with these parameters. Um, I've put my brain power into understanding how I want to function my common society, you know, uh, from my royals to my nobles, to my military, to my crimes and justice. Um, such as it's against the law to milk cows in the street, play tennis in the guild halls, no baking bread too late, no playing dice in town. You need to hang a public sign to sell ale or run an inn, and no wearing clothes above your station. These are all laws. Um, and it, it took me a long time to slap this together, but I wanted a system in my head that's far more narrow and specific for me as a DM that I can say how the world works uh, versus go, mm, yeah, sure. And then I can build all my creativity off these as a foundation. Hope that makes sense. Okay, so. Important NPCs. I have a village elder hunting master, craft master, and then a local bailiff. I would imagine that's it's kind of what I put down as a baseline thought. Tell me what you think about that. And these are considered the important NPCs in the village. I mean, don't get me don't get me wrong, uh, uh, Dylan. That I will improvise a lot in the middle of the game, but having <laughs> exported all the baseline thoughts, my improvisation has a stage 
to build on. Um, yeah, so I'm asking for suggestions. Important NPCs for a village that um, I think Let's just list off some important people that would that would live in a village, you know, a fantasy village. Is there a, do we think there's a village elder, a hunting master, a crafts master, uh, maybe a local noble? And remember, this is a town of a hundred people. It's close to the size of a town that I grew up in. <laughs> All right, so we got a crazy old lady who reads palms. All right, so let's, let's get some. We got an elder. Uh, crazy, crazy old lady reads palms. Elder slash. It's the local watchman leader. After all, it's something goes uh, bump in the night. So the watchman leader. Okay. Younger, more radical youth. Okay. Youth. Um, radical. Hi, Marlin. Uh, thanks for popping in. A weaver. Okay, so that's a that's a craft. Um, an old adventurer who had quit after getting shot in the knee. Ha ha. You know, uh, a retired adventurer is never a bad idea to toss into towns. Um, it's always a great NPC who can give advice. Uh, would it have something like a guild or too small? It's too small. The, the population is a village. So, population is a village. Sorry. The population is 100 people. It's about 10 to 15 houses, a couple barns, a stable, a shrine. They don't even have the means to build a church. Uh, potentially, they might not have a religious leader um, because they one didn't come with them, but they have a shrine just, you know, for moral uh, morality. Uh, no military uh, because it's too expensive to put military in villages, but there's probably traveling military. Uh, I like the idea of there being a local watchman is somebody who speaks to the traveling military on the village's behalf. That makes sense. Um, if you're a small village, you want you want the local fighter to be the, the representative or something. Let's see. Uh, shun local screw up. Okay. Uh, shaman or bishop. Sure. Did you know Shaman had no vowel on the second half? <laughs> uh, the Elder. Yep, we got one in here. Pseudo-religious. So the Elder slash Mayor slash um, Shaman slash Bishop. So they're kind of... So for being it small, the... Looks like the main leader is also somebody who leads in the morale, uh, keeping everyone's spirits up. Uh, would there be a small farm on the outskirts? I think so. I think a village is just popping up, right? So they're just starting to do crops. I think there might be 
at most two farms. I think there'll be two farms. Uh, go ahead and let me know what you think would they be farming. Um, I, I don't, let's say they're not near a river, okay? Uh, and actually, let's say there's, they, they are next to a river, but there's no main road to the village. I think that that's an interesting idea. So the way for people to get to the village, they have to take the river. And which means they're surrounded by wilderness. So it's just a cove around some woods. So let's say they have two small farms. It's not even acres. Uh, stable master, if there, there's a stable or suspicious lack of stable master. So would they have a, they would have a stable because they're trying to start farming. So they transported a horse or an ox um, through probably a dangerous quest to get to the, uh, this spot. Okay, we got a farmer, we got a, a retired adventurer. What does the village produce? What's their main source of export? Okay, so they're on a river um, and they're inside a cove surrounded by wilderness. What do you think they should be producing? We got two small farms. Let's figure out their two main um, produce that they are farming. That's gonna be a big thing. If they're surrounded by wilderness, I do think um, local watchmen, I think there should be a a, uh, a hunt, hunting group. Hunting group, which means there'd be like hunting master or masker hunting master so who's in charge of the hunting group to go out so they could be exporting pelts pelts um neat a blacksmith i would say a small blacksmith Nothing fancy. They can't make, it's probably very difficult for them to make something new for an adventurer, but they could definitely repair something. Uh, this is more for world building, but whatever is the region most cheap and effective crops. Could be the village probably grows. Potatoes is a real, in the real world. Pick something. Um, feel free to pick something for their produce. Uh, guild of carpenters you know there would be builders there would be um, and they might be some they might be a, uh, another group tied together you know like when they're not building they're doing something else uh, probably wheat maybe rice Let's see, rice. Canola, what about carrots? Maybe a tailor. Don't forget lumberjacks. Yeah, okay, so lumberjacks, because they're, this town, this village is small. So they came here, coming down the river and they found this opening. They're like, oh, this is a great spot to plop down a village. They're moving, so there's a lot of people who are moving to this spot, and it's potentially a good spot uh, to grow into a town, knowing that um, they are built on the side of a river. That means there's fresh moving water and quick access for trade. That means in due time, it could become a 
populated town and eventually a city. Uh, definitely within a century. So, uh, since they're on the river, I saw something. Fish. Yep. Fishing. Since they're on a river. Let's actually state that. On a river, uh, surrounded by wilderness. Okay. Uh, farming. So we got carrots, apples. So I would say there's probably one farm doing some form of wheat. Um, Got to get those. Got to get those heavy carbs, um, and then I would say the other one could be produce. Being, if it's apples, they want to build an orchard. Carrots, if they do carrots, ooh, that's the thing. If they do fruit, they have to grow trees, which takes longer. If they're going to do uh, vegetables, it would probably be much faster. So, carrots. Potatoes. I saw someone mention potatoes. Will there be live any livestock? Um, with a stable, you know, they probably with the fact that they have a blacksmith and they have a stable. They probably didn't take a road because there's no road leading to this place, but they definitely transported through a trail with the help of maybe some other adventures to get some oxen and horse and uh, the blacksmith equipment there. So once the blacksmith, blacksmith is there, it's far cheaper to get metal work happening. So let's see, we have wheat. So you probably want a horse or an ox to carry the, uh, the plow. So let's say they have two oxen there. Um, and three donkeys. Uh, those are perfect uh, beasts of burden. Fruit could be around the village trees. Um, that's true. Um, hunting. Let's swap this out. Hunting. Fishing. Uh, foraging. Yeah, it's an A. Uh, local fruit. Ships promise. Maybe a daycare for the kids. Okay, a daycare is interesting because it, it's not big enough for an actual school. So there is education because we got kids. So we got kids. How many kids we got? We got a total of 100 people. You know, couples. Let's let's say pick a pick a, a number under 20. And that'll be how many kids we got. Okay, I'm seeing 15. So let's say we got 15 kids. Classic. I was like, why does it smell like something's talking to cooking? <laughs> um, I left fries in the oven. Okay, so... <laughs> um, oh, these are your worst food fries you're trying to keep for yourself. <laughs> nothing caught on fire, thankfully. But, back to this. <laughs> so we have... So wool. Someone brought up sheep and wool. Um, 
sheep need to be grazed and it takes a lot of land to graze sheep. And if they're being surrounded by wilderness, I don't think this would be a great spot for a shepherd. It'd be, in fact, surrounded by wilderness, those sheep would be endangered from wolves. So I would say they have to import. Import. They have to import wool. They have to import metal because they're not mining. There's not, there's no, uh, it's not near mountains. Um, exports. So we got fish, pelts, meat, local fruit. Because the farming is for the villagers. Um, and they have no reason to export wood. Um, maybe they can export wood depending on the wood of the the forest around them what are we considering age uh 15 kids ages varying from 10 10 to 15. that feels right so you have like proper kids that can actually be NPCs and you have teenagers who are rebellious. But everyone's hard at work because it's struggling times in a village. Continue doing school, Ocean. I'll be here doing what matters. <laughs> okay, so this feels like a good village. I don't think we can add too many more people. So we have an elder mayor shaman. I think bishop is too big of a word for this. Um, shaman. You know, per. per uh, let's let's uh, do some tabs. There we go. I would say the elder mayor shaman character covers political. Um. And religion in the group. Crazy old lady. So in a village this small, I don't know if there would be, I don't think there would be an inn or a tavern, you know? Um, oh, that's, if, if they don't have it. Um, ale, they're importing ale. Definitely. A uh, water manager works on getting water to the village. This includes making wells, filtering the river water. Oh, that's interesting. That's a very good point. So, water manager. Let's come up with a cooler, more fantasy name than water manager, too. Um, filters river water. Um, so we're saying this guy's going to also deal with magic. I don't know about that. I mean, if it's a shaman, maybe. Um, crazy old lady. Let's come back to the crazy old lady. We got, uh... Local watchman. So the local watchman isn't necessarily military, but I feel like the local watchman would be part of the hunting group. Um, so. Hydration specialist. I mean, a, a butcher oceans, a, bu a butcher would work. Local, 
local watchman could be volunteer. So. Volunteer. Um, it's volunteer and let's see. Butcher would really only be necessary if they have consistent supply of protein. Well, if they have a hunting group and a fishing group and a foraging group, right? So we need to get them skinned and we need to get the meat uh, chopped and packaged. That sounds like a butcher's job. Unless the hunting group is doing that as well so you go hunting for a couple days come back and you prep all the stuff because it's a it's a cheap village there's groups of people who are going to be wearing multiple hats uh, uh ocean taking the lady uh the lady taking care of the kids is like really really negligible and looks like she hates her job possible um, let's see. That is, I, I forgot to write that in here. Day, daya care. Daycare. Okay, so we got a daycare. We'll come back to that. So we have two farms. Uh, which means we have two full-time farmers. Um, farmers would be would fall under economic though it's not making money it's important for the community to make money or to just function they i would say the daycare would be a place for social activity as well um Retired, so the wheat farmer can be the retired adventurer. They need to import salt for the meat curing. That is, I mean, that's a fact. So they got import salt. Uh, and to that point, sugar and spices. Let's do, let's do salt and spices. Maybe the hunting group is favored by the elder to the point of overlooking their bad behavior because the supply to the village is best with their best export. Um, I never realized how much fun it is to make a town. It's so much fun. It's, it can feel like over prepping, right? Uh, but you can just, you can be as bare bones as this. And you just have the info on the side and you improvise the rest. And this just kind of gets you through it, you know? Like more than half of this, the players will never know. But it allows you to kind of just make things moving on the type of river there might be a filter be able to filter enough salt possibly you know i let's say they have to import salt spices ale metals and wood because that they don't have a road yet so boats have to come down and any major big things they have to deliver have to come on a loose trail through the woods, which needs a guide. Hello, Wim Bravo. Um, yeah, so daycare is a, a place for socializing. So people who 
I wouldn't say people who can't work help with the daycare, like whoever it is. Um, I would say the daycare is just as important because let's let's have some fantasy in our medieval world where parenting and teaching and raising kids has an economic value. <laughs> So people actually care about it. Um, does it actually bring money to the town? No, because it's not a paid gig. Um, if it was a town, there'd probably be a paid gig. So let's go here. We got kids 10 to 15 years old. I would say once you get past 15, uh, once you get close to the age of 15, you're pretty much being asked to work on things to help with the town. So the local watchmen, we got, it's volunteer. We have, I think the watchmen are also the hunters and the fishers, the fishers. <laughs> Fishermen and uh, foragers. I think that should just be one group. You know, like the hunters and gatherers of the, the party, of the, the village. Um, it's all volunteer. And we have a daytime watcher and a night watcher. We have a day watcher and a night watcher. Okay. So. Hunters. I think these hunters are going to be using bows. They don't have the money for crossbows. Um, let's, let's give them three. So they really can corner a bigger animal. Because if you get, get an elk, you could feed an entire family of four for roughly a year. That is such a rando fact. It's not really actually helpful here, but you can kind of gauge that. Fishers. Fishermen. Fishers. I'm going to start saying fishers now. Um, fishermen. Small river. Let's give them two. Foragers, two. So, three, three, three. So we got nine in the local watchmen. Let's come up with a cool name for that. Yeah, I have that listed up there so I can clean this up. Retired adventurer. We got two shared oxen and three donkeys. The donkeys are really, I mean, a donkey's a lot of calories. Not as many as a pig. I had a weird conversation about that recently. Let's do two donkeys and one oxen. So the donkeys are really duh, just help carry shit around the oxens for farming mostly. Town's druid. I would put the town's druid more of the elder mayor shaman. And the reason why I, mayor, I think mayor is too big of a word, but mayor, let's, let's get rid of mayor and say the word elected. Who's the leader? Come on. There we go. Don't know how to use a keyboard. Uh, how do they get bows and arrows? Well, they're importing metal and I would say they're importing major wood or specific wood. Otherwise the lumberjacks are cutting down uh, what wood they need. 
And those are the builders. So we got local watch. I don't want to use the word watch because that's a whole separate thing like Game of Thrones, the wa the Black Watch, the watch. That can be a cool guild. Um, but we do have builders and lumberjacks. I think the builders and the lumberjacks are are the same people. So just like hunters or just like the hunters and the fishermen, they go catch it, they bring it back, they spend a day or two prepping it, and then they uh, hand it off to so-and-so for distribution, for exporting and keeping. Local builders and lumberjacks, they'll go out, get the uh, lumber, bring it back, work the wood, um, and stockpile it. Smaller wood they would stockpile for fire. And then once they get enough, they would help build it or build whatever project they need to be building. Gotta get some milk and cheese. Um, you know what? I think because there's a stable. We got animals. We need a stable boy. So that retired adventurer, he's got a stable boy or stable kid, stable girl, whatever. Um, And a spouse. Kid who is a stable boy and um, animal wrangler. Wrangler? Yeah. Let's just say wrangler. Wrangler. So the, because the adventurer would have the means to have a farm. You know, he's a retired adventurer or she's a retired adventurer and their family wants to move to a small town. Hey, this small town's just starting up or the small village is starting up, go down the river and start making a farm there. Be part of a small community away from the politics that they had to deal with being adventurer and they're a little bit more um, off the grid. Blacksmith probably would double as a warrior or a Fletcher. Yeah, I agree. When you're not working on metal. So I would, I would put local builders. Let's put the blacks blacksmith and Fetcher all in one that's one person uh, what about a wishing well uh, with around a river there's no real need for a well medieval Sounding name for an accountant. A bailiff. <laughs> uh, should have a goat pasture. Let's just make a note on that. A small, small goat pasture. See, doesn't the farmers do not even have an acre? Gotta remember that. Maybe a pen. A goat pen. Um, I don't know. They need. They want eggs, right? So this this is a retired adventurer. Ten. Whoa, that's a lot. Six. Uh, six chickens. One rooster. Chicken pen. 
Okay. Uh, Orange says, I feel like the children would play uh, more of a part than just filling up a daycare and may help gathering things like berries and fruit. That's interesting. So let's take foraging away from the local watchman and let's put that in the daycare. So the social, because everything's about uh, survival, right? So, social, education, and economics. Economics. Um, let's do like two parents, you know? Two adults are always working the daycare. And kids are... Uh, foraging or foragers and the two adults are there to help teach the kids about the local here's the local fruit here's the local plants here's the local area and therefore the next generation of people in this village are more educated about this area that makes sense to me uh, bookkeeper accountant kind of situation Let's see. So, when it comes to the, the leadership of the town, they're not a lord. They're still, they're technically still a peasant. Um, and the traveling military goes down around the villages, and the traveling military uh, is led by the regional sheriff. An unsupervised traveling enforcer of the law, traveling across the region, charged with collecting taxes and enforcing region, uh, enforcing region-wide justice, ordering and paying reward to death warrants without royal approval, provided the subject is not a noble. Um, tasked with protecting all royal buildings and estates within their jurisdiction. So that's a sheriff. Think like Sheriff of Nottingham, right? That's because historically sheriffs were unsupervised. They can go, they can turn pretty bad just to get their job done. And that's how the story of the Sheriff of Nottingham came to be. So the sheriff will show up occasionally and they have, the sheriff has to deal with the elder. And if the elder is a religious leader, there's conflict, but there should be someone who, I'm gonna keep on working on these builders, local builders, lumberjacks, who, there should be someone who's got a ledger for all the trade that they're doing, right? So we got Yep, uh, we got the leader, and we have apprentice. It's not spelled correctly in any way. Uh, apprentice. Um, no, that's not right. It's kind of a bailiff. I'll bailiff. You know, I always spell that word wrong. So we got a bailiff in this village. Um, bailiff is technically a lord. Would outrank the elected leader. But elected, lead, elected leader is... Let's just call him a bookkeeper because I don't think a noble wouldn't be in villages. In my mind. In your mind, totally. All right, so we got this. We got a leader, a bookkeeper, 
come back to the crazy old lady. Uh, we got the local watchman. Let's let's pick a name for the local watchman. They're they're volunteers, day watcher, a night watcher, a few hunters, and a couple fishermen. Their job is to go hunting, go fishing, prep the uh, the food for export and eating, and one person is in like a, a tower, like a, a wooden tower during the day and at night, they're up there as well. That's their job. Maybe occasionally doing a roundabout, but so I feel like Watchmen only covers these two. Let's, let's juice this up. Let's have a cool name for this idea. Then we got local builders, which are the blacksmith, fetcher and a fetcher at the same time lumberjacks slash carpenters um we got one of these the lumberjacks let's say we got four of those yeah so uh oh my my chat was stuck up top i haven't been seeing the new I'm sorry. Let's see here. I'm gonna try to catch up. I'm so sorry. My chat was sitting there and I thought you guys weren't uh, making suggestions. Small grocery store. Um, there, there is a grocery market slash stand. Fletcher, thank you. Uh, medieval toilets, there are none. They are pooping out in the woods or peeing in pots. Another name for a bookkeeper is, uh, would be a knowledge hound handler. I like that. I'll, I'll keep looking down too. Knowledge handler. Um, Bookkeeper is one word. Didn't you know that, guys? I don't know if there was already mentioned the river, a water mill. I think a water mill is in their plans. You can either have a water mill here now or not. If this was a town on the side of the river, 100% there would be a water mill. Uh, lore master for keeping. Okay, lore master is another great one. Uh, quartermaster for the traveling military. Uh, quartermaster. Let's look up quartermaster. Because in my society paperwork, I didn't put quartermaster. And I don't remember why. Uh, small wheel is a good idea. Stone hauler. Quarterman. Ooh, stone haulers. I like stone haulers. Slash Masons. There's an eye in Mason. Nope. Uh, I guess they have wooden houses and uh, building them then, right? Yeah. So the houses would be Let's have a visual, you know? Let's have a visual pop in our brains super quick. Um, these look more like town houses. Here's some a stone village. Eh, yeah. Okay, so we can go stone. I think they wouldn't. Okay, okay, okay. Interesting, interesting. This is more in what I'm thinking in my head. Uh, some thatch roofs. Uh, cause. Sure, you can have a stone hauler, but stone's heavy. Stone is cheap, but stone is heavy. Um, okay. Uh, less of a full-blown quarry, more than the place we get good rocks from. Yeah. Um, I mean, they could be lifting rocks out of the river, I think. 
uh, the arm. If the village is a body, there it's arm. Ooh. Village arm? I like that. Another area could be a small area to put up tents and canvases. Um, yeah, tents and tents and canvases. What, what? English? Dang it, Carmichael! You're on the internet. <sighs> uh, <laughs> so yes, tents. Where are the houses? I'm gonna put some tents. Twelve tents. Let's just put that number in there. It's just a, a number. Um, bakery for basic breads and stuff, depending on supply. Well, they have wheat. So they would want to process it into bread. But you need a mill for that. Or am I wrong about that? I believe I'm right. They would have a tannery, but they wouldn't... I don't know if they have a tannery as much as they have a place to do that and the arm does it themselves. So... Let's see... The arm hut. That sounds weird. The arm hut, which has a tannery and a butcher, a butcher supplies. Um, food prep. And a kitchen. It's a in a kitchen, yeah. Because it, it's small, uh, a small enough village, one hut would be like the mess hall for the town or for the village. Uh, local witch doctor that isn't really good at their job, isn't uh, militia the more technical term for local volunteer police military I think the crazy old lady can do real magic <laughs> um, narratively oh yeah crazy old lady elder you can toss those all in there um, I'm trying to get bare bones thought of like here's a village and you can ex expand and decrease and build your spectrum around that um, see the local builders they would have uh, what was it? a lumber lot a small lot a small lot with um, huts not the word shack barn they would have a barn with a barn for lumber lumber and stones beer brewer so you can have a beer brewer totally um i put in here that they're importing ale so because they don't have the means to make it yet they don't, they don't have a whole brewery. Um, youth, we kind of covered them. Grocery market stand. Uh, we kind of put that in the, the village arm. They have their uh, tannery, butcher, uh, butcher, village kitchen. So, Honestly, the village arm 
Let's find another word. Arm... Because when I make it plural, it doesn't sound right. Arms. Uh, because they're not military. They're not a militia. Um, and if they did have a military, and it wasn't registered under the, the regional lord, um, they would be considered a foreign army. Um, which would cause problems. And one cook. So these are volunteer and rotation. Rotational. So that that means this group that's in the village. Volunteer, they they just swap out, you know. Last week I was a day watcher, today I'm being the hunter, and today I'm fishing. Um, and today I'm prepping food. I think you could have uh, some kids are foragers. Some kids are um, kitchen help. Kids probably won't be helping with lumberjacking or carpentry. Probably too dangerous of a uh, labor, unless, you know, in your story, they really push to have the kids be more labor. Uh, like if the longhouse type structure in the center of the town that has most of the communal service. Yeah, so that I wonder what's the best way for me to try doing this. Should we draw from this? No, I think drawing will send us down another rabbit hole. Um, there should, structure-wise, the elder or the lower master knowledge handler, they should have a... Main hut, or central hut, or town hall, you know, they should have that. That's, they can obviously have public meetings outdoors. This is where they're, they're doing all those meetings, especially when the sheriff shows up. You want to do that in private. You don't want the sheriff to come into your home. Probably the elder lives upstairs, though. Um... I like to think of it like a longhouse type structure. Center of the town has most of the communal services. Yeah, so we have that. So this is a... Service hut. Um, it's like large. Um, hut. Large hut. Um, this would definitely be social. That hut where the kitchen is, people are, the mess hall picking up food, tanning, butchering. That would definitely be, that would fall into the social category. And economic. Um, oh yeah, we have kids helping in the kitchen, so there is educational value. So, fix that. There we go. Crazy old lady. Shouldn't screw up. So, uh, local wacky. Let's call them that shunned uh screw up or crazy old lady so there's one one of those per town or one of those per village weaver uh what does a weaver do i have an idea of it but i just want to be accurate that doesn't tell me tell me what a weaver is <laughs> So we got sentries for the group, port watchmen, 
graveyard. Craven talking about how they found could grow coffee beans. Um, they could grow coffee. Coffee, the best place to grow coffee, and since we can control our world building, would be around the base of volcanoes. And I feel like because it's a lower population of society, because wilderness needs to be flourishing to have cool adventures, um, I think the smartest, most craftsmen of coffee makers would move or move to or move with villages or towns or just make a farm at the base of a volcano. Volcanic uh, soil is super, super, super good for great coffee. And if you know that fact, why make mediocre coffee? Uh, controlling village wide events. The game master. Hmm. Yeah, you know, we don't have entertainment. I mean, entertainment technically is in here, but entertainment falls falls in social. Sure. Builders, they're not a social group. They're straight up. Um, economic. It is hard, tough labor to be the, one of the local builders. Let's see. Let's put clothes on import. They're not there yet. They can't make their own clothes. Two small farms. Uh, we already got this. Cool, we're boiling it down. Um, is it more of a deciduous forest or a coniferous forest? You know, I'm not gonna lie. I wrote down the differences once and then I, I've now forgotten. Let me see if I can quickly bring it up so I don't Google it. Go ahead and say what's the difference in the chat for me. And if I get it wrong or can't find it, I will rely on your insane knowledge. Let's see. Uh, Traveling encounters. I would have totally put it in here. Okay, so I have... Uh, Deciduous forest um, changes with the seasons. Uh, majority of it is inland. We got maple, uh, oaks, elm. Okay. Uh, evergreen forests mostly all year round. Mild winter and heavy rainfall or inland in dire climates. I think that's what it would pretty much be. So we got decision words, Carmichael. It's the evening on a Monday. Decisions. Decisions. Why can't I? Hang on. I'm gonna pause the music so I. Deciduous. Deciduous. There's that extra U that my brain did not process. <laughs> hey. Don't judge me. Uh, okay, so we got. So they're inland. It's clear water. It's a clear water river, not near the ocean. So that that brings up if it's evergreen, the trees aren't changing throughout the year. If they're decidu deciduous, um, the trees and the seasons show. 
What do we want? Port Watchman? Uh, the Port Watchman, I would say, is the Day Watcher or the Night Watcher. Uh, do they have a graveyard? Not yet. Not yet. Maybe. Um... Tailors. I don't think they. I think they stitch up their own clothes. Um, you know, I don't think they have. They don't order just fabrics. I think they order shirts and pants from a tailor in the in the nearest town. Play a little budget kids park. Um, average climate of the area. I'm visualizing greenery. Like we got green trees. It'd be cool if they change in the seasons. Um, it would suck if that water freezes though. We got a, a, a main river. Relevance, uh, any relevance or portal to the Feywild? Well, with the Feywild, let's look at our Fey Society. Um, no, that doesn't, Fey Society doesn't help. My primer does. Um, deep forest, so I kind of, for myself, I kind of changed up how elves work, which that's a deep rabbit hole to get into. Um, here we go. There are, in, in my, in my settings, there are four races of elves. We got a highland elf, a woodland elf, a dark elf, and an ocean elf. The reason why I kind of categorize it that way is the veil to the Feywild are in those types of areas, deep in the woods high at the top of waterfalls in the in the cracks of mountains uh in the underdark in the uh, underneath the ocean that's where i see the veil being most powerful to the feywild so deep in the woods there could be wood elves and um accidental access to the feywild so the wood the wilderness around the forest is dangerous there are beasts there are Fey monsters at night? Oh gosh. Tell you what, my traveling encounter. What's the terrain? Pick, let's pick a terrain. We got. I mean, they're woods, right? So at night in the forest, Fey and monsters on my traveling encounter, we got tooth fairies, uh, were beasts. We have. Satyrs? We have trolls, um, treants, uh, dryads, redcaps, which in my, my mind, redcaps are essentially just fey goblins. Um, we got rain, <laughs> winged apes, nymphs, giant spiders, um, chesser cats from uh, <laughs> one, uh, Alice in Wonderland. We got a dream eater in there. We got quickwood tree. We got twilight walkers. Um, during the day, you're dealing with dire bears, brown bears, black bears, dire wolves, packs of wolves, um, brave bandits, <laughs> uh, owl bear. We have. Deer, just basic deer, uh, woodwood, dryads, more woodwoods. We have elk, uh, potentials. We can have uh, centaur, p 
packs or tribes somewhere in the woods. So, eh, the bandits, I would probably just make that as a, a group of wood elves occasionally. But that's what you're dealing with in the woods, right? Um, that makes survival difficult. Uh, I think an old growth oak forest would be fitting since it's relatively out of the way. It could have some huge growth. I agree. Uh, definitely some uh, Primal Fae stuff. Quest bounty board for the player to get some extra GP. That would be in a. I would toss in a town, Orange. I would definitely toss in a town. Not in a village. In a village, rumors and gossip. It's too small for just like, hey, can anyone just uh, take care of this for me? No, it's, oh, an adventure. Adventurers, they showed up. Uh, can you help us with this? Can you help us with that? John the deer hunter. Haha. <laughs> um, anything swampy in the biome? There can be. Probably deeper in the woods, there would probably be a swamp. Uh, where there's black pudding. Uh, every terrain has a potential for a dragon, but you know, you gotta be nice to a village once in a while. Black pudding, we got frog ghouls, venom trolls, dire trolls. Let me toss some of these in here, guys, because there's a river in this, too. We got a whole bunch of beasts. Giant constrictors, uh, corpse flower, dream eaters, banshees, giant crocodiles. Uh, there's even the potential for problems literally on the river. There could be a hydra one day at that village. <laughs> uh, during the day... We have bears, two-headed crocodiles, in the, or at least in the swamp there. Hags, you know. Don't limit yourself to a hag that's just green. Just make hags. Hags are always great things to deal with. Uh, this isn't a, a published game in any way. This is just my primer and my traveling encounters that I've been working on for better part of this year to kind of like prepare myself to stream as a DM on this channel too. So I just want to get ducks in a row. And these streams where we're workshopping like villages and towns, that helps me. And I also like having it be a uh, part of your guys' thoughts so that way this is also yours um and then when i toss this all into uh, a campaign or like a one shot or a four part one shot or something like that when you watch it you have an understanding of how it could be built based off this so i think we got yeah, they have a small hut. Let's toss in Grave Duty in here. Builders will make a coffin, um, make a stone. What is the word? What is the word? Um, I'll, I don't know the word. Uh, cemetery stone, tombstone, thank you. Oh my goodness. Headstone, yes. Um, blacksmith will make some nails. Um, since they, they'll probably just order ingots of metal and then the occasional nails. They would probably, their small hut barn, I honestly would call this, they would have a small lot with a general goods uh, not really a store because a village is more so in the bartering system I think I, I wrote that down here uh, actually I wrote it here organized governments okay 
towns and village often barter, trading work for work. Uh, work six days a week. Social days are essentially one day a week, are normally temple days or feast days or trade days. So on the seventh day of the week, if you have a seven day week, it's a, it's a, celebra a celebrating day. Um, cities and bigger town, you can have towns be barter and money, but villages, I think it's all barter. Um, so they would have a general goods hut, yeah. With lumber and stone, uh, it will have the lot. Lot for lumber and stone. A kiln for, did I spell that right? Yeah, kiln for smithing. Yeah, they would take care of that stuff. Easy. So five dudes, five people on that. And you know, that would bump this up to, with the general, the general hut, the goods hut. And having grave duty, that would be a social responsibility. Um, they're not running religiously, that's their leader. Do they deal with currency of sort? They could take money, you know, like an adventurer comes by here, take take some gold, take some, I mean, gold's a lot for these people. If, if bartering in, is the main form of trade in villages, the, the copper and the silver, let's be honest, they're maxing out on silver. The copper and the silver that a village gets is all meant for importing um, things that they need. So if an adventuring party comes along this village and they help out and they want to go to the general goods and the general goods is like, oh, that's fine. Just, you know, maybe you can help us out a little bit and you're trying to just socially get the players to help, but the players keep offering money. That town would, that village would put that money towards growing the village first and prime, uh, first and foremost. Uh, I think on a, you could argue that community is important, especially when survival is an important thing. 15 years old. Small low budget bank. I think the bookkeeper, knowledge handler, and lore master, that kind of a person is the one handling the money. And they work side by side with that leader. Local religion or uh, national, local, regional or national. Um, so I function. I function under. There's national and there's regional. It's a really good point. There's national, which is all the regions, and then there's the individual regions which in my society would be dukes. Dukes would run the uh, regional, and then locals being towns and cities would all have barons or baronesses, uh, which rep are represented by sheriffs. I'm reading this off my paper. Sheriffs, bailiffs, and mayors. Mayors being an elected baron, which I think is a cool twist. Uh, so this would be local more of a communal fund for trade yeah i think i think that makes sense let's make a note of that so uh profit profit money sure that's that's a phrase money what's the word i want currency Copper and silver is common. Gold is uncommon. Platinum uh, is rare.
So copper, silver, and barter. Barter with a T, not D. There we go. So that's that's the trade system when you get to a, a small village like this. And there, where's the distance? Did I put the distance? Oh, I did. Where? They're one week of walking distance from town. So we have a river. So walking slash boat. It's not swim. Sail? No. If adventurers start spending a lot of gold, people will take notice and try to get more by offering more services. Right. I think the richest person in town, which is their own private business, like not by business, I mean their their privacy, would be the retired adventurer. They would have the most amount of money in town, but they're investing it in, in the community and in their farm that they just want to chill out and do their own thing. Oh yeah, there's a water manager. So we got a village arm i forget we mentioned some ideas to replace the word arm let me scroll up in the chat super quick sentries village sentries Put a variety of words there. We can always choose when we're taking this and building our own. Um, local builders. Let's see. The water manager or uh, who filters the water. Do they have a belief system? They do have a pantheon. I think they would... And you can have your own pantheon. Uh, I think I have a pantheon of six or seven gods. Where we're comp... Or like modern gods um i also have titans so they're the old gods um if they're in common society they would follow the common gods accepted pantheon um and they would have a shrine so let's have that let's add let's make sure we add that they have a shrine to the most popular god and the god of death and maybe the god of wilderness since you kind of want to pray to the god of wilderness just a little bit to be like can you please not send wolves tonight my my baby is due tonight don't want them to get I don't want us to get attacked by wolves when we're supposed to be delivering a baby <laughs> so yeah shrine of the most popular god god of death and the god of wilderness they wouldn't have a shrine to the god of death unless people are dying uh, would a village have something unique in it to make you want to go back and maybe uh, an item you can only get there. Yeah. Um, absolutely. This is very generic right now. For the most part, I think this is very generic. It is the bones of it. So I would say pick, take this and give it a unique thing to it. And that is the unique thing that this village has over other towns and villages so that the players would take this and go, okay, I, I, this is this is that spot. Uh, does the uh, village have a reason of being there? Good, it exports. Yes, so uh, fancy pants. We got imports 
exports. They're just a village. They, there's nothing special in this breakdown yet. This is a village on the side of a river surrounded by wilderness. Um, meaning the, it's a struggle. It's tough love and they're trying to make it their way. They do have a retired adventurer who is a farmer, not a member of the village arms watchmen or sentries. Adventurer could probably help out, maybe as a watcher or a fisherman or a hunter probably, but kind of keeps it at arm's length. Yeah, ritual sacrifices totally makes sense. Does the God of Wilderness accept blood? You tell me. Uh, is the river large enough to uh, appear a dock? Yeah, I think there is a dock. Um, let's put a dock on there. Builders would definitely... I think the water manager is going to be in the local builders. No, makes sense that they're in the arms. So, a great way that I see this as taking this village and, you know, putting a spin on it to make it your own. This is great foundation for you just to go, this is a village. Uh, a great way how I would apply this village is top of session one. The you narrate as a dungeon master, you will narrate that the players were hired by the regional duke or uh, duchess to explore some of the local villages in uh, the outer side, the outer ends of the region. They keep hearing that some people are dying, children are going missing, and obviously living in a village. It's it's hard life, you know? It's not like being in the capital or a citadel. And you're being hired to go check on some of these. And the players sail down the river together from a nearby town, which is about a week away. So they've been on the river for the week. You could start the, the session with a river encounter. Um, Let's, during, let's just give them a river encounter, you know? Uh, roll a d20. Don't... No, I do have a d20. Yeah, here we go. Let's roll a d20. Four! Nothing happens! <laughs> they are extremely lucky! <laughs> let's have some fun. Seven! Um... Exotic Traveler Fisherman Bandits. This is out of date. I gotta update that. So, Exotic... Exata... That's not how I spell words. Um... Fisher of Bandits. So they have to deal with bandits on the river. You can open up your session with that. And... Uh, when they finish that encounter, they roll up to the docks of said village that's having a problem. And obviously you can figure out what your quest is already by that point. Like I mentioned, people are dying, kids are missing. Kids are missing, okay. What, what we could be dealing with an own, um, on a meta level for just the DM, not the players. You're dealing with an Oni, you're dealing with a hag that is luring children into the woods, uh, especially when they go foraging. It's a perfect opportunity. Um, could have some spirits, um, fae spirits that are angry that they're coming too close into a Vale territory and the fae wild is endangered. You could be having some local wood elves being a conflict to this village. And you gotta figure that shit out. 
Um, yeah. That would be the best way for doing it. A village is struggling to, sur to get by and they just need a little help against an antagonistic force that is hurting them socially, uh, economically, you know. Uh, big note, if a village or, not really a village, if a town does not have a military, you have to compensate. That's a power vacuum. Um, that'd be run by bandits, a town with no military. There you go. In fact, remember how we said there is no military and we're going to take uh, when Bravo's note that and I rolled a seven. So there's bandits on the river. Maybe the, the heroes don't kill all the bandits. So no military equals bandits. Lots of bandits and bandits can be orcs, can be goblins. Bandits is just a term as just like local baddies, right? Um, local bandits, lots of bandits. But you gotta remember, these bandits also have to survive against the wilderness. So there's a, that means there is a nearby bandit camp. Um, there are children here. I'm just gonna make a note of that. So, let's just have some quest options. There are children here. So, hags. Possible hags. Children taste delicious to hags. Um, you're in near the wilderness. Wilderness. So, you got Fae. Beasts, um, wood elves, your, you got the river, so river creatures, think about that, don't, um, if it's a village built on a river, I would go a little light on the river creatures and the river monsters. Um, when in the village, traveling down or up river to a village, yeah, definitely have some monsters going on. Um, cool, cool, cool. Great, I think this is a great blueprint for a village. What do you think? I love everyone's like narrative inspiration based off of this. This is great. A master craftsman, a renowned master craftsman. Yeah. Um, you could, and then let's type in there, unique. That's not unique, that's unique. Uh, person, object, um, person, object, yeah, person or object. Um, let's put a wooden watchtower. The wooden watchtower in my head is, uh, Princess Bonoke. Let's see if there is a visual to it. It's not okay. Uh, demon for scene. Spoilers. This is the bottom of the watchtower right there. There it is. 
That would be the watchtower, 100%. It's super cheap and easy to build. And you got that day watcher just chilling up there. Um, village uh, blueprint. And so I have a city generator right here. And while well, we only, we went, we did a lot of work on village. We, we spent the last two hours on a village. That's, that's pretty cool. Two farmers, one farmer, one wheat farmer. You can say one to two farmers. I say one to two farmers. So did we cover our our stuff? We got political in there. They also have religion in there. Uh, magic. We don't really cover magic, but if you want to have a shaman in your village, a shaman would be religion and magic, 100%. Um, it, and that also depends on your magic in your in your world. Um, I have an example and that can get your brain working. Again, organized. We have magic and crime. Magic is common and generally uh, regulated. Sorcerers and warlocks have been mostly known to be wild cards and have caused the most damage to non-magic folk. Wizards and clerics are educated and trained to use their magic to help society, and thus it is easy to spot and vet bad apples before they ruin the bunch. Um, that's magic in my common society. It makes sense. They're regulated like they self-regulate. Wizards don't want wizards to ruin the name for wizards. Um, so, back to this. The city generator. We basically... We'll just push this down. Let me bring up a table and we can dig at that for, for the rest of this stream. Because it doesn't look like we're going to move on to towns. We can do towns in a different stream. So in my city generator, I use a one, two, three, four. So four by four. This is um, based off of Professor Dungeon Master's city generator. There we go. Doot -doot. This is a city. We're gonna work, or we're gonna trim our way down. So imagine a city or the, a city built into a grid. Your, your players can enter any place you want. Um, I do have a table to roll where things are. Give me a second. This might be a very fast way to do this. Just copy and paste. Don't know about you, but I'm pretty sure copy and paste is fast. If I find it. City generator. There we go. Districts. Perfect. This will be the next thing we do for our, our village builder. So our village will not be this big okay this is for cities so we're going to trim ourselves down so it's a random city generator that you can the night before the hour before your game you know just start rolling dice i dropped my dice start rolling dice to figure out where parts are and uh some good guidelines being Here's some good guidelines. So adjacent squares, you can randomly roll for all of these and just take the, the idea of adjacent squares are always higher or lower social class. Since this is a village, social class 
isn't really a thing. We're going to be erasing a lot of this stuff. But you can have, for a village, a center, um, middle zone, and outer zone. So to do that properly... Let's see, delete, insert row below. So delete row, and then delete this column. Okay. So, the grid for the village is a three by three grid. Don't need this since it's too complex for what we're doing here. We have all that information down here that we just spent the last couple hours building. So we have a main hunt, main hut, uh, a town hall, and uh, a shrine. Let's make that the center. Or where should where should in our village be the main hut for the elected leader slash shaman or religious leader and the bookkeeper? Is it big enough for a healer or a novice uh, apothecary? I think you can have an apothecary or a healer be moving in. Um, cause it, like in uh, Deadwood, you know, when the beginning of the show where everyone's moving into the camp, that's the kind of idea of a village, right? Before it's super populated, people are starting out um, trying to figure out what the local resources are and trying to make profit off that to build the place. Uh, since they are a river town, yes, yeah, so they're not built on the river, they're just by the river. So let me actually insert column to the left, wait, to the right, and we'll paint this. That's, that was wrong. It's this. There we go. That's the river, okay? And this is the mainland. So now it looks like we're kind of building a map. Okay, so we have population, it's about 100. You can go up and down for that, but I'm just putting a, a flat number to not under or overwhelm somebody new to making a village. River town, center, center, center of a river town would be the economic focus for the river trade. That would be near the docks, but not exactly at the docks. Sure. So we can say that the docks are here, right? Or dock. Let's be honest, there's only one dock. <laughs> um, right in the middle. Okay, so let's put... I don't like main hut or central hut. I like the word town hall, but town hall doesn't make sense for this small of a village. Toss in some suggestions that we can name it. So we can have some good names for people who stumble on this view video later on, or for yourself that if you want to come back to this. Longhouse, village center. Longhouse is really cool. Longhouse also, meeting hall. Meeting hall is a good one. Get rid of town hall and put meeting hall. Um, meeting hall, community center, head house, the building that building over there, community center. I like that. Let's let's make let's just use those three. Community center. 
Um, meeting hall and community center I really like because they kind of define its purpose. Longhouse I really like because it kind of describes what you're expecting on a scope or visualization. So we got a dock and a town hall. Uh, I'm gonna type in less characters, so longhouse. All right, important NPCs. I love it, important NPCs, we don't even care about the names. Figure out the names another day. Um, so we can go to, okay, vi the village arms, watchmen, or sentries. We have a large hut with a tannery, a, a butcher, and a village kitchen all in one. So the, the mess hall. Um, where are we putting that mess hall? Do some clean up here. Yeah, I, I'm thinking the same thing, uh, Sir Shadi. Yeah, so we got we got a, we got that mess hall, that village kitchen where the hunters, the fishermen, and the cook and the water manager mostly work. Where would they be in this three by three grid for your village? We got right middle. Bottom right, bottom center. So we're thinking mostly this kind of area. Upper right. I got two bottom centers. So it's, it's definitely this area for 100% sure. Um, seems direct water access would be beneficial to that work. All right, good night, Orange. Um, yeah, let's put them here. Because you don't want people coming in from the docks, walking through your food. You want them to be nearby. Um, village kitchen. And then the the fisherman and the the water manager is right there. It's great. Also, oh no, stone haulers are part of the builders. Um, good night, Wim Bravo. Oh no, are you saying good night to Orange? Or are you saying good night to us? Either way, good night. <laughs> Uh, let's see, we got the builders. The builders need... Builders worry about grave duty, dock maintenance, stone hauling, which they're getting their stones from the river. Uh, there's a blacksmith and lumberjacks and carpenters. So it's basically a general goods store, general goods hut. Uh, to With a lot for lumber stones and a kiln for smithing where does that general goods go players are coming in here that's true shoddy your resources are right here if the bandits come down the river but there are no military it's <laughs> literally uh the hunters and um and the volunteers oh we do need to make sure there's a watchtower a single watchtower so i'm gonna do something crazy add a row above 
a robe. This might be too soon. So I'm gonna undo that. Um, seems local to tr transport big stuff like lumber and stones over water. Yeah. On the right side, right here, you kind of gotta walk past the the docks to get there. So the uh, hunters and gatherers, they would they would bring their stuff here. Uh, kitchen for everyone. The general goods is here, to the docks. Is that what you're thinking? And the builders are right here too. Okay, let's let's place that there for now. General goods. And then if anyone thinks it should be in a different spot, go ahead and say so in the chat. Let's let's hear some have some ideas. Um Local building trading would imply uh, symbiotic existence, maybe minimalizing conflict with local bandits and possible defense. That's absolutely true. A good way to survive since you have no military is trade. Hey bandits, you need this to survive. We have the means to collect this stuff. We can bargain. And then local bandits can help protect them once in a while, which is illegal. But hey, maybe the bandits can make sure that the village can pay their taxes since they're not really making a lot of money dealing with monsters and beasts. Where should we put the watchtower? Watchtower. It's a watchtower. We have a day watcher and a night watcher. Oh, I already... Whoops. <laughs> um, watchtower on higher ground, so further away from the water. Okay, so the watchtower should be somewhere over here. Um, I think it should probably be here, kind of balance out the weight. Because I'm, because we also have to add some residential. Okay, so let's put the watchtower here. And an important, what's the most important thing people need to protect by the watchtower? You know, these adjacent ones. I think. Uh, Residential. Tell me if you think I'm wrong. Oh no! I've ruined it! Helms! Less characters. Unless these guys are expecting an ambiguous invasion. Okay, instead of a tavern, travelers uh, would lodge in residential, I agree. Or um, at the, the longhouse. They could also stay at the longhouse. Um, are there any neutral borders north, south, and west? So, if we want to get to that. Is there a difference between the longhouse and residential? The longhouse is where the elected leader and the bookkeeper, uh, it's a community center in a meeting hall. Um, I would imagine the leader and the bookkeeper would live there. They would probably make 
their rooms or an extension to it. You can get wacky with it, you know, fantasy. Um, but, and there would be a shrine in the longhouse, 100%. There would, the, the shrine would be in there. In case of an attack, they head to the longhouse. Yep, yeah, and that's easy access. Okay, so let's double check. Do we have anything else? Daycare. I think the daycare would be at someone's house or the longhouse. That makes sense to me. So it doesn't need, especially if a lot of the kids would go foraging and kids would be helping in the kitchen. Someone's house slash longhouse. Makes sense to me. We still have two farms to add to this. Um... That's pretty much it. So let's let's look at the borders around here. Um, above, below, and this is gonna mess it up. Left. Oh, it didn't mess it up. Great. So we can change this if this is too tight. I like the restriction. green better uh, do, 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 do. wrong green there we go and they're surrounded by forest did it again guys um, there we go so this is what we're generally thinking about in they're surrounded by woods. Obviously, we can make some clearing for the farms and stuff. Daycare may roam building to building and assist in foraging. Yeah, exactly. Okay, so we do have two farms. Um, and let's say if the watchtower is here, right? They might want to be expanding more this way since the watchtower is easy to spot so homes are really close to the woods guys <laughs> but we also didn't specify you know how much square footage is in this it's abstract it's it's abstract i'm gonna not scare myself. There can uh, be more than two people chasing after village kids. Yeah, there's two adults under daycare. So, what was this? Merchants in the middle. We got the center there. We got agriculture and residential. So, let's put... I don't think a farm would be here. I think... Putting the two farms next to each other is pretty smart and efficient. Um, they can share some bar uh, barn space, some lot space. So farm uh, one and farm two. Whoa. My caps lock is on. There we go, everyone. Look at that. And you can say the lumber, lumber jacks have been working mostly in this area. Right? And the lumber jacks kind of cleared up this area. So it's a little bit lighter foliage okay if there's any animals they should be relatively close to the watchtower or, or homes in case of predators yep remember if kids are helping out with uh, forage foraging in the forest it's a perfect opportunity to have a hag story like Hansel and Gretel 
But yeah, this is, we actually, you know what? The villa, the original model for city building is a four by four. We kind of went by four by five because we wanted an actual centerpiece. Um, and we went a little bit bigger to just get the surroundings. But here's your village, everyone. You know, we, we had to keep in mind our social, our politicals, economics, all that stuff. We kind of rounded that uh, up into a form of abstract. Uh, we got rivers, we got wilderness, no military, there's bandits nearby. Uh, we have a few children. We have, um, there is a unique person or object. We didn't need to specify that here, but it's a good note to have. They import wool, metal, ale, salts, and spices and clothes because they're not there yet. <laughs> this is not even, uh, at, like, class-based. Uh, the currency is copper, silver, and bartering. Uh, gold is uncommon. And platinum is rare. Uh, it's a one week walk or boat, you know, traveling through the river or hiking through woods, sure. Um, I would make a note uh, walking through wilderness is times two travel, you know. Why not? Yeah, a little. Yep. Yeah. You can you can remove that if you want. And the purpose of them was their purpose. They work. They live. They pay their taxes. They they just want to like be slightly off the grid and not deal with city politics. And they kind of want to just make it on their own a bit. Because I feel like if you you have the capitals get the cities and then you have towns and then you have villages and they're like a web scattering outward right not a perfect web but that's how they would reign so if you're starting up a village you're really trying to like start something on your own and make something of your own we have important NPCs there's elders bookkeeping that uh, and then the shrine. So we have, we cover politics, region, and uh, magic. Yes, bookkeeping kind of is an economic thing, but they're not creating economics here. They're just managing it. And I put that under politics. Uh, village arms, watchmen, or sentries. You got a watcher, and uh, uh, they got a couple watchers. <laughs> they got hunters and fishermen, and cook, and a water manager. And water manager slash cook assistant. Honestly, I would make the kids do this. <laughs> uh, and this, and them having a big village kitchen. It's social. It's economic. They're preparing all these foods that they can export to make some money so they can pay their taxes. Education, the kids come and help, and there's a watchtower. That. But there's no military. There is no military, so you can't put military. Watchtower is just part of the watch. They can probably defend themselves to a degree, but they are not a military or a militia. They're just locals. Um, we got local builders, which is social and economic. So that means economic, they're making stuff. We got carpenters and lumberjacks, stones, grave duty, with this crosses in the social, grave duty, dock maintenance. That's very important for economics. Uh, general goods store, there's your, your big economic one right there. So when an adventurer comes in, you got them in here. So we have grave duty, dock maintenance. That would be a carpenter or a lumberjack. I think the blacksmith, We have a general goods. Let's make a note that they're probably still more. Let's. Let's 
make one of them and one of these six NPCs in your village has to also occasionally run the general goods store. So when the stone haulers, and when we got plenty of stones or plenty of wood, lumberjack or stone, or if the blacksmith is off duty, they can run the general goods store. So that's, that's good to understand and know during the day who's watching, during the night who's watching. Local wacky, shunned local screw up, lazy, uh, crazy old lady. Have one of those. <laughs> uh, daycare, there is no specific place. No specific place. Um, and then you got two farmers. One farmer making a retired adventurer. That adventurer can give a lot of good advice and maybe have an important, unique object. They can also be the unique person. They can uh, be holding on to some old uh, potions that they were holding for a rainy day. And it looks like these new adventurers who showed up definitely can, um, might need this. And you got some goats, some donkeys, a couple beasts of burden. You got carrots, potatoes, uh, tomatoes. Uh, carrots, tomatoes, what's another good one? I think we need to add some greens. Some dark leafy greens, cause let's just have that. Um, goats, and with a goat pen, so they can milk the goat, have some milk. Let's, let's give them two goats, it's a hundred people. <laughs> That goat's gonna be sore. Um, and a few chickens and a rooster. It's great. It's positive. Wheat. Do we, can someone answer this question for me? Do we need a mill to process wheat? I feel like we do. And if so, um, let's change out the carb that they're farming. Let me catch up on the chat. Ooh, last place might be a boathouse. Maybe, maybe a boathouse. Um, let me scroll up. Um, let's see. right back everybody go ahead and think about this for a second Okay, guys, sorry about that. Um, pressure got to me and gosh, got a little bloody nose, no problem. Uh, okay, let's see, safe water to drink. I came late, uh, 
Is there a wall around the town? No, because it's not a town. It's a village. They would not have a wall. Um, they would have the means, if they were being attacked, to build up some bar some quick barriers. Let's see. Yeah, mill to process wheat. Uh, the music is from uh, Brian Metellios, who does the music for Fables of Refuge. <sighs> Since we do have a donkey, they could be operating a mill. So, in a boathouse. Don't want the... Let's see. Hmm. Not too small or not too big amounts of grain. The mill would be a small stone wheel about the size of a cow. And the beast of burden would pull the wheel around and grind it. Okay, I'm gonna actually take that. Let's, let's do it. Let's... Should that be attached to the village kitchen? What do you guys think? Put the a small mill right here. It's super small. Um, it probably needs somebody running it all the time. And it'll probably be the stone hauler. Let's be honest. Um, or it could. It would probably be a kid. Probably. A kid would be maintenance, uh, keeping it up. Obviously, we'll have a beast of burden running it, so we have a donkey or something. Um, it doesn't have... To, that's right. A mill does not have to be in the water. If we... Here's, here's a thought. If we put the village kitchen here, we can put the mill right here. And it would be close to the farms. No, no, no. The, the kids wouldn't be operating the mill. They would just send the kid to go make sure the beast of burden is fed, that it's resting and working at the proper, proper times. Between the farms, uh, between the farm and the kitchen. So we have two farms right now. What if? Undo. I see what I could do here. Because abstract space. There we go. Yeah. And let me make sure... Copy this. Let's go down to the farm. So we got the wheat. Carrots, hawks, donkeys. Not too small, not too big amounts of green. Uh, big mill. Small stone wheel, about the size of a cow. So medium size. No, 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 that makes sense. And a donkey. Perfect. Uh, why not have the village kitchen be between the farms? We could. Do we want 
a farm next to the river. There's not a lot of room for the farm to expand. Whereas this could expand this way, this farm could slowly expand that way, or whatever. Or we could just shrink it down to one farm. It's pretty crowded. We could kill a farm. If we killed the farm... If we killed this farm, move the village kitchen here, and we can do mill and storage. We could also do that way. Uh, the market would be kind of the general goods. Uh, I imagine it's there is a closed building structure, like a hut. Uh, but there's also a plethora of food like an open market on the outside. So people can barter and trade. Kids can eat and stuff like that. I know. Blay nose in 30 minutes. I'm prone to blaying noses. Um, <laughs> the inhumane. Alright, so here we go, guys. I, in two hours, we're gonna we're gotta wrap this up, okay? So in the last two hours, we built a village. A very generic village. You can use this type of grid pattern to move your buildings around. We Generally say a village is about 100 people. We got some rules here, some guidelines with the some ideas. Um, and this is all based off a river. Obviously, this doesn't have to be a river. Uh, but if it's not a river, you definitely want a clearing to move maybe two different directions. So the, the party can come and go in two different routes. And the rest being kind of foresty um, or it's an open plain village those are probably going to be attacked by bandits a lot more uh, we talked about some impossible imports exports currency it's a one week walk slash boat distance from a town walking through the wilderness is two times the travel the general purpose for the NPCs and then we talked about the major NPCs that are here and by major NPCs, like, you don't have to pop, you don't have to give every single one of these a name. You can. We have kind of a general count. And then the rest are kids and spouses that are doing other stuff. Um, but this will give you a sense of, like, who needs some names, who can be there for them to bump into. Uh, there is no inn or tavern. It's too small. Uh, they would go to the village kitchen or the longhouse. Uh, armory or bank, not in a village. Not not in a, a really cheap, low-budget village. In a town, yes. But they're not there yet. They're next to a river, which means uh, within the next 50 to 100 years, these guys could easily be a bustling town looking to become a big city um, we got a couple farms we got an idea of daycare there's no specific place but we have an understanding of how the education and how they take care of their kids you toss in a wacky person yeah I think this is um, pretty good the longhouse is a community center a meeting hall it's all good I, this is great. And you can plot a bunch of quests dealing with this town. And you can, since this is so abstract and vague, you can customize it more. Or you can go in detail and start making your map, you know? And start figuring out how far everyone is actually from each other. Yeah, I think this is a great way to build a village and a town. Uh, I've only 
tried this once, failed. Uh, I used this to adapt a module's uh, village a bit, and it kind of worked there, and I'm glad that doing it with you all, it worked. So yeah, use this approach when making villages, and um, we can, on another stream, do a town, so we can go get a little bit more busy and more detailed with things that we're, that this place couldn't afford. Um, so yeah, I think this is awesome. I gotta, uh, get going, and I really appreciate everyone, uh, who had the time to hang out and contribute to showing how this kind of village, town, city generator kind of works. So just as a recap, we started with just the three by three. We added the river because it's a river town, but a, or a, river, a river village, but this is what you're dealing with. A town, we're going to bump up to four by four. Um, yeah, this is awesome. I, I, and it's not stressful. It's just putting the pieces together. And remember, we this is the last thing we did. Okay. I'm really excited about this. I'm gonna save this one hardcore. Um, I hope you found this useful, beneficial, inspirational. Um, I will, on our Discord, which is linked below, I'll make this document shareable and that way you can copy and paste it and do what you want with the copy and you know make your own thing all right guys thank you so much for spending the evening with me uh, thank you so much for your participation in this uh, bouncing ideas off of the group makes world building and just generating ideas that we can share in the community an awesome experience that being said i'm gonna say good night um i'm gonna go get a snack and i'm gonna go relax and probably hang out with my cat who's whining in the background all right good night thank you everyone Bye.